So one end of my amateur radio antenna fell out of the tree and I need to go out and get it resolved. I need to put it back up in the air. Typically, maybe once every few years, I'll pull the entire antenna down, take a look at it, check all the connections, and I'll run it through an SRW meter or a tiny VNA to make sure that it's resonating properly. I thought I would share that with you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go out, I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix the antenna by putting it back up, then we'll come in, look at the antenna design that I'm using, and then use a tiny VNA. This is a fairly new low-end component that's available so that you can look at Smith charts for your um, antennas and you can get SWR cross frequency bands. So it's really a neat tool. There's tons of information on YouTube about the tiny VNA. I'm not going to go into great detail about it. That's something you can find on other channels. But I thought it would be kind of fun to have you join me in trying to get my antenna fixed. So before we go out into the yard and take a look at it, what has happened is the short end of my antenna has fallen out of the tree. Now the way I have my antenna up it's somewhat interesting because I have it on a pulley system. So what that means is, is that at the center you have a, a ballon, which actually takes coax down to my radio, my amateur radio station. And then with the offset, uh, I'm sorry, um, off center fed dipole, one end goes to one tree and one end goes to another. But when they go to the tree, they go through a pulley and they come down to a weight. It's actually a sash weight. They're used for um, opening and closing old style windows and there's a weight and it helps you to lower and, and raise the windows. It's kind of counterbalanced. Um, so I have two sash weights. So what this allows to happen is, is when there's wind, those weights can go up and down keeping the antenna straight and taut but without causing damage to the actual line that's connected to the antenna. What I suspect happened in this case is that either a squirrel chewed on the line or there's some point where it was rubbing because there's also a line to get the pulley into the tree. So here I only show one line but there's actually a line that also has the pulley and it's possible that that's actually what broke and uh, once we got it back up in the tree we'll come in and take a look at the quality of the um, antenna and what we can kind of expect on the bands all right thanks see you outside so this is the end the insulator end of the dipole that goes up into the tree and gets to a uh, ballon up there. And this is what has fallen out of that tree there. So we need to get it up on one of those branches. So this is what I built a few years ago. Basically it allows me to shoot up the line over the branches and then pull the line back up through the weight. So let's give it a shot. So I was able to get it shot up over the branch I wanted. It took a few tries, but now uh, we're good to go ahead and bring the pulley system up. So let me go and get set up the lines. So now as I feed it up, it should go up and over the branch. Okay, so I was able to bring it back down. Now I get to hook the pulley to it. It's hot out here. Going to hook the pulley to it and then we'll build a bring. We will be able to bring the rest of that uh, dipole back up into the tree. Well, need a little device. Certainly uh, 
helpful for getting things up into trees. If you're gonna make one, it might not be a bad idea to add a little bit of a fishing pole here to help control the line better. Let me go get the uh, pulley. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this on. You can use a bowl end or pretty much any kind of knot. Okay, so there it is. Now what we need to do is to bring the line from the dipole through this, bring this up in the tree, then we can lift them both up. Um, I'm gonna have to add some new line to the, the end of that dipole. So let's go back over there and take a look at it. So this is the end right here. And this is an insulator. This is the actual dipole itself. And what we're going to do is cut this off, this old shortened line where it got chewed off or rubbed, broken off. And we're going to install a new one. Making antennas can be a lot of fun. It's not really that complicated. You don't need a lot of advanced electronics or hardware to build antennas. And I'll show you that when we uh, Go back into the lab. Let me get a piece of uh, new line for this. Okay. Actually, I'm not going to put a bolt in on it. I'm going to well okay now we need to just go back over run this line through the pulley and then bring the pulley up and attach it to the weight this is the line for the end of the dipole Let's see if I can get myself in here so this is the line for the end of the dipole this is the pulley system we're gonna run the dipole in through the pulley and we're going to add the shave the um, sash weight to the dipole end i suggest you do that sooner rather than later so you don't lose so you don't lose either of the lines now i can bring up the pulley As we bring it up, we can see that we're bringing up the antenna as well. Now I just need to tie off the pulley line, the base of a tree over here, bush maybe, and we're all set to go. The line's back up. Then we can go in and check its SRW, uh, see how, it's, how it resonates. The line is back up. You probably can't even see it. It's pretty stealthy. So now let's go back inside and we will take a look at it on the scope, actually on the tiny VNA. Okay, now that the antenna is up in the tree, let's take a quick look at the specification for the antenna. The easiest way to find that is, is if you go to qrz.com and look at my call sign, AC9LZ, I'll put a link to it down below the video. You will be pulled into a page that talks about some of my amateur radio adventures. More importantly, it talks about the antenna, the off-center fed that we just looked at. If you click that, it will bring up this PDF that talks about the antenna. It's off center fed because both legs of the dipole are not equal. One of them is 6.9 meters and one of them is 13.8 meters. This is the leg we just put back up into the tree. Uh, it has a four to one ballon in the middle and the other uh, leg is longer. 
that's why it's off center fed. It works really well in my yard because of the way I have the trees. Um, this antenna will work on 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters, as we will see when we go over and look at the tiny uh, vector network analyzer. So with that, let's head over to the, uh, to the radio bench and we'll take a look at the antenna. All right, so we've got the antenna hooked to the VNA, the VNA hooked to the computer. We're going to run the Nano VNA Saver program, which will obviously allows me to use the PC to control the VNA. It's much easier this way. You're not messing with this little touch sensitive screen. First thing we need to do is just click connect, connect to device, and there we go. And it's already set for the frequency range that I want, but let me explain what that is. The antenna, if you remember, was for 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters. Well, those meters represent a wavelength, and they actually translate to frequencies. 40 meters is 7 megahertz, 20 meters is 14 megahertz, and 10 meters is 28 megahertz. So what we want to do is we want to actually scan between 5 megahertz and 30 megahertz with the VNA. So I just did that and what this shows us is is over the given frequency range it has plotted the, S the SRW, the standing wave ratio. And what we're interested in is standing wave ratios that are close to 1.0. Standing wave ratio is how much power, it's actually the ratio of how much power is getting out. A 1.0 is what you want. The higher the number, the more reflectivity you're actually getting from the antenna at the given frequency. So in this case, we'll take, let's take a look at uh, this point right here, which is a very low point. We can see that at 7.2425 megahertz, we've got an SRW of about 1.5, 1.6. And 7 megahertz is 40 meters, 40 meter band. If we look at this next dip, we can see that's at 13.9, you know, 14, that's 14 megahertz. So that means that uh, 20 meters, we're getting a fairly low um, SRW for 20 meters. And then finally, if we go way over here to the right, we're at 28.16 megahertz or the 10 meter band. And it looks like we're at an SRW of maybe 1.2. 1.1 something so it's so the antenna is actually really good at 10 megahertz slightly better or slightly less better slightly worse at 20 megahertz and slightly worse at 40 megahertz but all of these SRW numbers are within acceptable ranges for communications for trying to get as much power out of the radio into the air as possible so with that Let's hook the antenna up to the radio and make a contact. CQ, 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 K2J. AC9, LZ. QRZ. AC9, LZ. Alpha Charlie name 9 Lima Zero, correct? Roger, Roger. Okay, thanks, Mr. Stewart. 4x4, Dr. Carolina. Thank you very much. I've got you 5-9 into Madison, Wisconsin, 73s. Thank you for 5-9 in Wisconsin. You are set from Kilo 2, Julia. Thank you. Thank so that's how you make a contact. That gentleman was in North Carolina. He's running a special event station for 13 colonies. There's all sorts of things like that that go on. Uh, every weekend, there's always something interesting going on on the air. If amateur radio is something you'd be interested in learning about, there's tons of YouTube channels available. You can check out the American Radio Relay League. And uh, anyway, with that, I hope you've learned something new today. Stay tuned. We've got lots of uh, more projects coming up. And uh, take care.
Thanks. CQ, 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 